Okay, so I made made that thing up there. Um, and it was really frustrating and it took a huge amount of time, even with the tutorials that existed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through what I did and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a new version of that and you can just follow along so that it will take you like 10 minutes rather than like the 24 hours it took me to achieve that. That's the plan, okay? Good, time to go, yeah! Okay, so we're gonna start with a version of the Deforum notebook that I made to make it easier for me to do these these things that I'm doing. And what we did is we, we took this notebook and there's a version of this notebook that lets you take a video and convert the video into um, you know, the style of some sort of artist. There's a few things you can do with this notebook. I did the video thing. And I'm just gonna walk you through how to do it as well. So if you're like a tech savvy person, you're like ahead of the game, you're like a ninja, then you can shut this video off and you can just follow these steps which are written down. And I think they pretty much cover everything. But if you're not a ninja, if you're like me, if you're just like a slow, plotty kind of person, follow. I'm here, I'm gonna hold your hand, and we're gonna make this a nice, easy process, okay? I'm gonna put on some nice music in the background, we're gonna have a good time. So first thing, you're gonna have to grab a model, uh, because um, this, this notebook relies on Stable Diffusion, and Stable Diffusion is a model, so you're gonna need Stable Diffusion to be somewhere in your Google Drive. I already have it in my Google Drive. It's, it's sitting right here, um, under My Drive AI Models. That's where it's already sitting. So. I'd recommend you upload it to that folder as well. Uh, and where do you get it from? Well, let's, um, yeah, you just go here, I'll link in the description. You might need to like accept some sort of a licensing thing to get your hands on it. But yeah, so you download it, then you re-upload it to this place in Google Drive. Great, perfect. Okay, then you upload the video that you want. Um, in this case, I've already prepared a video that everyone can access. This is just like globally accessible throughout the world. I download it now. I'm gonna go into my inputs folder, which I made, videos, and I'm just gonna upload this here. And it'll, it won't take very long. Okay, so uploading that one. Um, and then we need to go find this video in it path. Now, if you look at this notebook, it's long. There's a lot of things here. It's a, it's a big, long notebook. So when I what I try to do is I just use control F a lot. I look for where the video in it path is. Oh, great, here it is. Okay, and I need to train change this path to the path where my guy is. So. River train one I'm gonna rename that because that's that sounds really bad river train and you can see where it's located my drive AI inputs videos so we already have a link to here already my drive AI inputs videos this content drive thing is just that's some sort of internal deal with Google's file structure your drive that you see in the GUI it's just it's it's sneakily there's also a content slash drive behind here which they don't show you so that's what that content drive bit is and we just called it rivertrain.mp4 videos great okay cool so that's that now we go back up to the top we've done step three change the animation prompts so that it has your new prompt in it okay so now we need to find a good prompt and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that video and then every frame of that video we're going to be doing image to image on that frame that's that's how this notebook is going to work for us at least Again, there are a few other things you can do if you want. You can like zoom around and pan and stuff, but well, that's all we're doing. Taking every frame, applying image to image to it. And of course, with image to image, you have your image, you have your prompt, and then you put them together and then you get an output. So we also need a cool prompt. Now, this is the one I tried before, although to be honest, I'm not quite happy with the results I got before, so I want some better results. Okay, so this actually looks quite nice, what we have here. I like the style of this quite a bit. I like how it's sort of like really bright. I like the lighting. Um, and if we look at our video originally, again, we see that it's got a river in it and then it's got like a forest as well. So it's got those two subjects. Now, if we were really clever, what we could do is we could change this prompt so that at frame zero, it starts giving us a river. And then at frame, you know, like 120 or something, it'll start giving us a forest. And that might give us really good results. But what I did last time is I just, I didn't really say anything about the subject. I just gave it some qualifiers like beautiful lighting, green, vibrant, and then I let it run with that. And then no matter what was displaying, whether it was a really close up tree, whether it was a sweeping vista, the AI took it and, and made something that made sense out of it. So we're gonna try doing something similar here with a very generic prompt. Beautiful, no city, because that might not be around. Bright, daylight, background, dreamy, highly detailed, lonely, atmospheric, ambient lighting. Okay, so all of this is, is generic enough that it'll look nice whether or not it's the ocean that we're looking at or the trees that we're looking at. Okay, so 
nice. Number five, change the batch name to a sensible name, of course. Batch name. Okay, got a new batch name. Great. Now let's go back up here. Okay, now all we have to do is run all the damn cells. That's all we need to do. So um, let's go. Now I purchased Google Colab for this because I was finding that until I had purchased it, it would often like time out and stuff, and it would say, "Hey." We're not going to give you access to a GPU for five days straight, sorry. So yeah, I purchased Google Colab, I found that really good. Um, it'll pop up and tell you to connect to Google Drive, and you should just do that. I promise I haven't added a virus to this notebook. Um, I pinky swear. A lot of the other tutorials focus on these motion parameters, where you can get this effect where the AI is like zooming in or zooming out and it, as it generates things. I don't like those effects very much, so I specifically made all the motion parameters like null. Um, and in particular, this zoom is set to 0, 1 which means that the zoom is just going to be stationary. Um, so yeah, you're going to want zoom zero one. That's really important. Zoom zero zero gives you nothing. So don't do that. Oh yeah, and if, if this happens and you're like, you're now looking at the code and we don't like code because code's scary. We're just going to go form, hide code. And then we're back to the nice, just form that we wanted. I found that it was good to extract all the frames rather than like you can extract once every four or something like that. I found extracting all the frames was really good because it made the animation sort of nice and smooth. The first thing I did when I was trying to um, bugger around with this was I made the image smaller so that it would generate faster. And I was like, yeah, I'm a smart guy because I'm getting faster. Turns out that stable diffusion just freaks out when the images are smaller than 512. So um, I was getting these anomalous results. I was like, what am I doing wrong? Turns out the image size was the problem. So definitely do not change the image size unless you know exactly what all the other parameters are doing. The last thing is a fixed seed as opposed to a random or an iterative seed. Um, and basically that'll just mean that things jump around less. That's, that's sort of all it'll do. Um, you can probably get some nice results with an iterative or a random seed as well though. Okay, and finally, here are the settings that we're gonna be tweaking a little bit. So this is sort of the main one, it's the strength, and it tells Stable Diffusion how closely to stick to the images you've given it. Now, in the previous video I made, I think it stuck too closely to the images and it kind of just looked like you were actually looking out of a train onto real life and it didn't much look like Studio Ghibli. So I'm actually going to put the, the strength down to 0.6. Okay, so now we've decreased strength. The next thing we have to do is also decrease the steps because there's this interaction between strength and steps. Um, steps is each time the AI takes the image and alters it slightly, that's a step. And the AI normally makes lots and lots and lots of steps in order to, to get a nice image from like a photo or from nothing or random noise or something like that. Um, and in this particular notebook, I haven't read the code, but just from trial and error, I've worked out that there's this interaction where when you make the strength higher, it automatically lowers the number of steps that you're doing. And I don't exactly know what the idea is behind that, but I just found that when I put the strength up really high, often I would get these sort of jumbled weird images that looked like nothing. And I was like, oh, well, that's to do with the strength. And it turned out that actually it was because the steps were like really low. So um, you can have very high strength and still get very nice images. It's just you have to increase the steps by a lot. I just decreased the strength didn't decrease the steps, I'm gonna check them down to 80. Um, and the other thing is that steps, the long, more steps you have, the longer it'll take to animate. So you wanna have lower steps if you can. And great, you know, while I've been talking here, while I've been just blurting out things, the code has all run. So now we're gonna go ahead and just, just run this and see how we go. Okay, so as we can see, it's like animating, it's generating frames. Now, these don't look particularly fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait, I don't know, for it to generate maybe like, 20 frames and then I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna turn those frames into a video and then I'm just gonna look at the video and if the video is bad then we'll change our tactics and, and we'll do something else okay great looks like we've got it stopped um, so now we just run the final cell and what that does is takes all the images you've generated and just plonks them into a video which now we can watch yeah and this isn't good right this is actually this is sort of what I would describe as like it's pretty bad actually. So why is it bad? Well, the individual images all kind of look like garbage, so that's one thing. And then I guess another thing is that they don't really lead into each other that well. So like, for instance, like, what's this? What's this going on here? Why is there this strange nonsense there? That doesn't make any sense. So let's just try to get the images looking nice first, and then we can focus on making them coherent. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten a different um, prompt, and this one actually mentions a lake. Uh, I got it from Lexica, uh, and it was one that like looked quite nice. So I'm going to change the prompt. And we're just going to go ahead and see if adding the idea of a lake into it is what we need to make the AI draw a nice lake. 
Okay, well this one's like, this one's definitely a little bit nicer. So that goes to show that changing the prompt can have a large impact on how good slash terrible the video ends up being. Again, there's like a lot of, there's a lack of consistency on those hills. I think the, the sort of weird object appearing on the hills, I think that's kind of fine, to be honest. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, let's try being a bit more vague. We'll get rid of the lake, we'll just replace it with nature scene, and see if that creates worse examples. Um, don't worry too much about overriding things, because all the images that we create uh, end up being saved still. So, if we go back to the AI folder, Stable Diffusion, um, I guess this must be Train River Anime 1, we still have all the images um, from the one we just generated, and below them we have all the images from the previous one. You can tell that they're different because of the timestamp, which is the timestamp that you started generating. And here we go, more images just appearing for the next timestamp. Okay, so round three. This is certainly worse, although probably better than the first one, I don't know. Like, not great, not terrible, right? Okay, so this one looks pretty reasonable. It's quite like stylistic, it's got all this lighting going on. I think maybe this is a good style for us, so let's try that. Okay, again, nice and vague, and yeah, let's go ahead. Now, my instinct is to screw around with other parameters as well while we're changing the prompt, but I, I always try to rein myself in. I try to be like, you know, like scientific and only alter one variable at a time so you can really isolate the thing that you're affecting when you make the change. Okay, um, I think this one's better. I definitely like it more than the last one. One thing that's kind of a big deal is that the background is moving you can't perceive that the background is moving. In the image, you can see the background is moving like quite slowly, but here, it's really not obvious the background is moving at all. So because of that, we're gonna have to go ahead and increase the strength. Okay, we'll try again. Okay, and now we can actually get a bit of, a bit of, it does look like there's a bit of motion in the background now. And the water looks a lot nicer. So actually by reducing the freedom, um, we got something that looks a bit better. That said, the individual stills, I still think they look pretty nice. Nicer than the original, certainly. Okay, cool. So um, I'm actually quite happy with this, especially the water. Like the water looks like, like actual water now. So um, I'm very happy with these parameters. I'm just gonna run it again for a final time. This all looks pretty good. We're gonna let it run all the way through and then at the end of it we'll have an image. Okay, so final pass happening right now. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is that every time you hit run, what it does first is it takes your video and then breaks it up into individual frames and then stores the frames in this input frames folder. Um, and if you have a bit of a longer video, then this can be quite a long process. So what I did is I added a little extra flag here, use existing vid images. And if you tick it, uh, and then of course run here, then it will just use the images that are already there, if images are in fact already there. Um, so yeah, that can just speed up this sort of iterative process a little bit. Boom! Look at that! We're done. It definitely looks better when there's a foreground to sort of contrast the background against, that's for sure. That's still something that isn't quite working so well. Um, but hopefully that was helpful um, and has given you sort of something to, a springboard to, to go off of when you're doing your own projects. Just one more thing. What I did was I started with the general deform stable diffusion notebook and then I just changed some parameters and made like a tiny tweak. And then that's how we got here. So if you want to use the regular deform stable diffusion notebook for whatever reason, and you want to replicate what I'm doing, um, you're going to have to make sure that all your parameters match my parameters. In particular, the animation mode has to be video input. Um, otherwise it'll just ignore the video or it won't use the video. Okay, that's it. Hope that was helpful. And if there's anything you want me to do, tell me about it.